Welcome back to 504 Road Trips. Uh, one of the most frequently asked questions that we get is how we put our videos together, what software we use, and we're going to take a look at that today. So basically we start with some pre-selected clips that we're going to put into the video. We import them into the Cyberlink Power Director, drop them into the timeline. Here I'm removing the audio so you don't have to hear us talking and complaining about other drivers and we don't have to worry about copyright violations on music and that sort of thing. We trim out the parts that were used in the previous video and what's going to spill over into the next video and then we go in and remove that one second overlap that each clip produces uh, the camera overlaps overlaps one second on each clip so now the video is trimmed make this adjustment here to get rid of the dashboard that way all you see is the road And we just copy that keyframe key frame attribute to every one of the clips. I'm sorry if any of this is a bit awkward. The uh, screen capture software that I used, which was just a freebie, uh, which you see a watermark in the middle of the screen. It says th thundershare.net. Uh, it made some of the commands not work quite right. Here what I'm doing is I'm doubling the speed of the video and what that does is that allows me to process the 30 frame per second video at double speed and then when the video is produced it actually comes out at 60 frames per second so you don't get that choppiness from skip frames it's true 60 frame per second video just played at double speed I'm constantly referring to Google Maps, sometimes Bing Maps, just to get city borders and that sort of thing, names of streets. And sometimes I have to double check that because Google Maps is not always accurate. Here I'm setting the start and end points of this particular video drive. Did a screen capture of the map and I'm importing it into GIMP. And GIMP, if you don't know, is a free editing software similar to Photoshop. And I just use that because um, I don't want to pay for a license of Photoshop for this computer just because this is all I ever do with it. Here I'm removing a lot of the unnecessary stuff that shows on the Google Maps screen. And then I'm going to darken up the map a little bit so it's readable. And as I go along, I, I keep this notepad document open and I put in notes. And that'll get used later on when I put in my uh, end screen. And when I upload the video, I'll have all my tags set up. And I type in my voiceover here also so that I can record that later on. We're not going to get into voiceover and music in this video. And 
here I'm just getting GPS coordinates to put into the YouTube video so that it can that's one of the things you can search when you search in YouTube videos you can actually search for location I doubt that that ever gets used but we still put it in because it has a place to put it Here we're inserting the uh, opening screen and the map screen. And we type in the title of the video, the date that it was filmed on. And then we're going to insert the uh, video's thumbnail, which I'm going to pull from the original video. Here we insert the map that I captured earlier. and add the highway shield which I've prepared in advance And this is the closing screen, so we type in the title again. And this is where we refer back to the notepad document where I typed in the uh, mileage and the time it took to drive it and I just pasted it in here. And that closing screen gets set to 20 seconds because that's the duration of the YouTube end screens where you get to post other videos to click on in the subscribe link. Here I'm inserting the fades that go between the opening screen and the map and the end screen and that's what makes it fade out at the very end also. And now I'm going to try and find a suitable thumbnail and normally I try to find something interesting. Uh, this particular video, and it, I guess this was a good one to pick to do a video like this, there wasn't a whole lot anywhere in this route. Uh, so I just picked... Fine, but there wasn't really much to see. So I just picked, you know, this random shot here. I size it up to the size of the screen, adjust the lighting a little bit, adjust the saturation on the on the cyan to make the sky look a little bluer, and that's my thumbnail. And that gets dropped into the um, opening screen.
So I'm adding these two tracks here and that's going to become the um, route and city tracks. And those run throughout the video. It shows what route we're taking and the different cities and counties that we're in and that gets chopped up and adjusted as we go. Now here I'm just copying the last city in Cross Street from the previous video. Because as we go from video to video we do overlap by about 10 seconds on each one so that's just what I'm going to start with on this one. This is Corel Draw. This is where we create all of the highway shields and cross street names and that sort of thing. And that just gets saved to a PNG file with a transparent background and we just drop it right into the video. This is that first cross street. I'm just going to pull that straight from the PNG file generated by CorelDRAW. And later on, towards the end, we'll put fade in and fade out on the cross streets. I didn't do that in this uh, in this video. That's one of the last things that I do. Here I have a preset speed limit sign. And we just set that for five seconds and... I happen to have the default set to 55, but you know, as we go through, the speed limit changes and we just change the number on that. The, the speed limit sign that I created as a PNG is blank and then I just have the uh, 55 typed in through the editor, through the video editor, so I can go in and just change that easily. And you can see that here where the speed limit goes up to 65. We drop in that speed limit preset, set the duration on it, go into designer and edit it, and just change that first five to a six. And at this point we refer to Google Maps to see what's coming up next, what cities are coming up, what crossroads are coming up, and normally when I put in crossroads I only put in the ones that have either traffic lights or have state highway numbers. In this case, there wasn't a traffic light beyond that first one through the whole video. And there was only one numbered state highway that intersected with US 49W. So just for the purposes of this video, I added a few more in. And we spend a lot of time trying to read the signs on the side of the road on that tiny little screen there and that tells us where the city limits really are because Google's not always accurate on that. And I think at this point I'm, I realized that I had forgotten to start the city track so I'm going back and doing that now. And I'm making a few different files here so I can just drop them in.
And in this case here, it looks like Google was accurate. Uh, I dropped Street View so I can see exactly what I'm looking for. And where to put the next... Uh, county name. Which also happened to be the end of that city. Here I can't read what the sign says, so I'm increasing the resolution on the preview so I can see it in full HD. And I'm going to add the river name, which is the Sunflower River. Had to lengthen a little bit so that it would cover the whole bridge. Everything that I drop in there defaults to three seconds. And then if I need to, I make the adjustment on the time. Now I'm just checking out a few things on the map and I'm going to try to find some cross streets to put in so now I'm going to compare the video on the screen with the video and with the shot in street view and make sure I'm in the right place and add in a cross street. And now I'm going to look for the next cross street that I'm going to put in. Here I'm kind of unsure because the lighting is so different and probably the time of the year, but now that I've determined I'm in the correct place, it's another cross street name that goes in. It's got a different name on each side, so it gets a left and a right.
Here I discovered a city that I didn't realize crossed over on onto US 49W, so I had to go back in and add that in. On my first scan, I completely missed it, so we're going to put that in. Now I'm consulting with the topographical maps and historic aerials to make sure that the name of this bayou is correct in Google Maps because they're not always correct. Once again, I'm having to correct a mistake that I made with the uh, unincorporated Sunflower County. For some reason, I had Indianola throughout that whole county, whereas Indianola is just the very last three or four seconds of the video, so I fixed that. And now I'm looking for another cross street to put in. In this case, it's Mississippi Highway 3. I want to go into Corral here. I have my little toolbox at the bottom with all the different shapes, uh, state shields that I've drawn. And I just pull that straight out of there and drop it into my template, put a number in it. Make sure it's positioned properly and, and we just insert it into the video. And it looks like that's it. So we saved the project. And I noticed that the title in this end screen is off center. So, and that, that's caused by a problem with the font that we use, which is a knockoff Highway Gothic font. And it acts kind of weird in the software, but not too weird to really cause me too much trouble. Typing in some keywords for later. That'll get uh, put into the YouTube tags when I upload the video. And that's it.
So thanks for watching. Please join us on our new Facebook group page at www.facebook.com slash group slash 504 road trips. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, post a comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Share and follow us on social media and join us for our next 504.